This is a function by equation y equals f of x. We will use Riemann sum integral in order to compute the area of the curve shown. Ignore the rectangles for now. Let f be a continuous function in the interval a to b. We will consider the area under the curve as sums of rectangles. Step 1. Make a partition of the interval a to b into n subintervals, all of the same length such that delta x is equal to b minus a over n. Define x0 to be a, then x1 will be a plus delta x, and x2 will be a plus 2 delta x, and x3 will be a plus 3 delta x. For value xk in the interval a to b, it will be a plus k delta x. Consequently, xn which is equal to b, the end of the interval, will be a plus n delta x. Step 2. We will use the fact that f achieves its maximum and minimum in a closed interval. In the interval a to b, let us look at k in sub-interval xk minus 1 and xk where k is any number 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. In the sub-interval, let us find minimum f value given by small mk. Let us find the maximum f value given by big mk. The green lines on the graph represent the minimum small mk and maximum big mk within the sub-interval. Step 3. Compute the areas of the rectangles over each interval. We can do this either by using the maximum or minimum f value in the sub-interval. Using minimum, the area of the rectangle is small mk times delta x, which is equivalent to small mk times b minus a over n. Using maximum, the area of the rectangle is big mk times delta x, which is equivalent to big mk times b minus a over n. Step 4. Add the rectangles of the sub-intervals over the closed interval a to b. The left graph represents the area of the curve using n equal 9, and minimum values of f in each sub-interval. The right represents the area of the curve using same number of rectangles, but maximum values of f in each sub-interval. Therefore, the exact area of the curve using a to b which is a term in the middle, and which we will define later, will lie somewhere between some of the rectangles using minimum values and some of the rectangles using maximum values. Step 5. If we make infinite number of rectangles such that n approaches infinity, the hope is that sum of small mk times delta x from k equal 1 as limit of n goes to infinity will be some finite number, and sum of big mk times delta x from k equal 1 as limit of n goes to infinity will also be some finite number. These two finite numbers converge to same number, and we call this number the Riemann sum integral. This graph shows the Riemann sum when n is equal to 100. This shows that the Riemann sum becomes more accurate as n increases compared to n equal 9, as shown previously. Therefore, if f is continuous, small mk will approach big mk as n approaches infinity. In conclusion, if f is integral on a to b, then integral of f of x dx from a to b is equal to sum of f of xk times delta x from k equal 1 as limit of n goes to infinity, where delta x is equal to b minus a over n, and xk is equal to a plus k delta x. Hi there. As an example, we will be calculating the area under the curve x squared from x equals 1 to 3 using the Riemann sum. The delta x, which is the length of the rectangle, is equal to b minus a over n, where b is 3 and a is 1. And kth x is going to be 
x0, which is a, plus k times delta x, giving you 1 plus k2 over n. Because the function is given by the equation x squared, f at kth x is equal to kth x squared, which is equal to 1 plus 2k over n squared. And taking the sum from k equals 1 to n, and function of xk times by delta x is the sum of 1 plus 2k over n squared times 2 over n equals sum and then expanding the bracket you get 1 plus 4k over n plus 4k squared over n squared times it by 2 over n equal to you can take the take out the 2 over n and then times it by the bracket you can take out the n because it's not relevant to the the sum where k equals 1 and just multiplying you get this expression here equal to 2 over n and then the sum of 1 when k equals 1 to n is just n plus 8 over 8 n squared and then taking the sum this is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2 plus and then the sum of k squared where k is 1 to n you get this you can derive this using other methods cancelling out n's and simplifying the numbers you get 2 plus plus 4 open bracket n plus 1 close bracket over n plus after expanding the all the brackets and multiplying by the number you get 8 n squared plus 12 n plus 4 over n I mean 3 n squared finally taking the limit as n goes to infinity of the expression written above. So it's 2 plus, then just multiplying the 4, you get 4n plus 1 over, I mean 4n plus 4 over, 4 over n plus the same thing. Page 2. Limit as n goes to infinity and then dividing by the largest common denominator, you get 2 plus 4 plus 4 over n plus 8 plus 12 over n plus 4 over n squared over 3 you get 2 plus 4 plus because 4 over n just goes to 0 and then goes to 0 and goes to 0 you get 8 over 3 which is equal to 18 over 3 plus 8 over 3 equals to 26 over 3 